everyone, I'm Radoslav and today I'm going to be explaining one of the problems from the lunchtime. And the problem was called Hot Meals and Cues and it was supposed to be the hard, the hard problem in this round. And it required some observations and after that it's about data structures. So without further ado, let's go to the problem statement. So uh, basically in this problem, uh, we are in a way given a queue which is initially empty and some people start going to this queue uh, like basically like just the first one comes then the second one and so on and so on and initially the dissatisfaction of uh, or like the discontent of every person is zero and what happens is that every student can either cut in line or so basically like he can cut some people uh, or he can just, as it's a queue, he can just like go in the end of the queue. And like in the first case where he actually cuts in the line, or basically like he goes before someone else, uh, what happens is that the dissatisfaction of everyone that he actually, but basically like in a way he passed some people and uh, now he will be standing before them in the queue. Basically like the dissatisfaction of all of those people increases by one. And in some sense, like, here there's like a relatively simple example initially the queue is empty then the first person comes then the second person comes and as you can see he goes to the end then the third person comes but he cuts the second the second person then again the fourth one comes and he goes to the end and then the fifth one comes and he basically cuts everyone i, I mean no, not everyone he cuts the second and the fourth so the dissatisfaction of those two also increases by one or in other words, uh, yeah, here you can see basically the dissatisfaction of everyone. Initially, there are no people, so the dissatisfaction is zero. Then it becomes zero, zero. Then it becomes zero, zero, one, so on. Because like the one is because three actually cuts two. Then it becomes like, we basically just add a zero because the fourth one just goes to the end and so on and so on. I mean, like in the end, the fifth one just cuts the last two. So we increase those dissatisfactions by one. So in this problem, we are basically given this array of dissatisfactions. So in a way, like we are, be, we'll be given this array, and we are actually interested in the number of people who cut some people out, or in some sense, that's basically just the number of people who pass some other people, and not like the total number of passes, but just we want to see the number of people who just cut in the line, or in other words, like we want to find the count of everyone who. Well, like in a way we can either find the count of uh, everyone who cut in the line or everyone who just went back, who just decided to go to the end of the queue because like the first count is just n minus the other count. Or in some sense, like in this case, uh, the answer will be two because as you can see, just the third one cut in the line and the fifth one also cut in the line, but everyone else just, just always went to the end of the queue. So yeah, that, that's pretty much the problem. And because if it was given like that, there were relatively easy simulations. Uh, the problem was actually a bit harder because you had queries and every query was either, but basically like the first type of query is where you actually are gonna print something. And it's, you're given an array, which is a subarray from left to right. And in a way like you extract those values and you run the, you want to find basically the answer if our discontent array, uh, array was just this subsegment, like from left to right. Or in other words, we can, we basically just have a very large array and to, we have some queries where every query is to solve our problem, the problem I just mentioned with the number of persons who actually cut in the line for some subarray. And yeah, you have like a lot of such queries. And also because there's a relatively simple offline solution uh, to this problem, which works in linear time. I mean, if we just had like queries, we also have some updates where the updates are given some subarray, basically just add W to all of the values in this subarray from like the initial large array. And this way, this ensures that you can't really do an offline solution because like you have to keep, you have to do updates and also queries. So that's pretty much it. And the constraints are N is up to five to the five multiplied by ten to the five, which is like just half a million. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, the queries are also of the same. Yeah, we can have like also as many queries. And there are like some smaller subtasks where the first one is basically you just want, you can do some simulation. The second one being basically the number of queries is relatively small. Then we have like just the same problem, but with smaller constraints, which might suggest that you can do some square, square decomposition or something like that. And the final one is just the general problem. So yeah, I hope you got the problem statement, but I, I guess like most of the people who are watching the video already know it. So yeah, let's go to the solution. And I'm gonna start it by actually talking about uh, some observations, which you're gonna see are just gonna be like one transformation for our array. Uh, and after that, like the problem isn't that hard. So first of all, uh, there's like this subtask, which is like the zero one where we don't have any queries. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that you also want to print uh, before all queries, you want to print the number of people who cut in if our array was like just the whole array. And yeah, there's like an easy n log simulation. Uh, and the simulation is pretty much, you can notice that the last person who basically like if we have such the, the, the discontent array, then the last person would be the rightmost zero. Because like in some sense, we know that his dissatisfaction initially when he enters the queue will be zero. And also we know that the dissatisfaction of everyone he'll pass is gonna be basically greater than zero because we add one to the dissatisfaction. So in a way, like we know that it's certain, like the last person who entered is certainly the rightmost zero in the dissatisfaction array. And in a way, like we can try going, doing the whole process from the end. And we basically are gonna, we, we know we, we can easily find who this person is uh then like uh, we basically just subtract one from all elements after this because in a way like we want to remove this person so we need to uh, get our dissatisfaction back and after that we just remove this uh, zero like yeah and you can notice that the number because like there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the dissatisfaction array and like the basically like the actual order of the person the, of the people i mean yeah basically like the actual order of the people in the queue you can see that uh, a person ha didn't cut out if uh, basically like the rightmost zero was ju just the final position because i mean if the rightmost zero was like just the final position this means that the last person just went to the back and so he didn't cut out anyone and then our answer will be just n minus discount and we can do this simulation in with either some binary search tree, like a tree or something like that, or we can also use just a segment tree. But yeah, I mean, this is for the first subtask, which was 10 points, and this is enough. But the thing about we, we should take from the solution is this thing where we actually subtract one from everything after a specific position, which means that we can actually create a specific transformation. So in some sense, before all queries, we are going to set our values. So basically AI is going to be set to AI minus I. Everything is zero indexed. Or in some sense, this will be the number, the maximum number of subtractions that can, can happen for this specific element. So yeah, I mean, in some sense, we try making all of those subtractions in the beginning. And then this means that actually what we are interested in is when we go from the back, just the maximums at every moment. Or in other words, this algorithm will give us the answer. The algorithm is simply like, like you just create the transformation initially. Like imagine it right now AI is already transformed. And what we do is basically just go from the back and we keep the, basically like the suffix maximum. And you can notice that this maximum changes only when someone didn't cut out, didn't continue. But basically like didn't cut in in the queue. So what we do is basically like, yeah, it's just a simulation. In, in some sense, it's like you go from the back and when you see someone uh, that has like a larger value, this means that some cut in, uh, that someone didn't cut in. So we kind of need to decrease our answer by minus one. And for the, basically like the sample, this was like the array and th this was like the discontent. When we do the transformation, this will, will be our Basically, like, yeah, the this will be our new array AI after we 
decrease everything by i. And you can notice that initially minus 3 will be the new maximum, then as minus 1, this will become our new maximum. Then minus 2 is smaller than the maximum, minus 1 is equal to the maximum, so we don't take it. And 0 is again greater, so we just set it. And as you can see, at uh, every set position, like the red ones, we basically decrease our answer by 1, so finally the answer will be just 2. And that's how we solve it, solve this. The intuition is that in some sense, uh, if we take out all of the updates in the beginning, so like basically this minus i, uh, b before like all queries, then what we notice is that actually, uh, not, not before all queries, but like uh, if, if in the simulation, which was like here, if we do all of the subtractions in the beginning, then in some sense, uh, someone w won't be w won't get in only if its value is greater than all values in its suffix and basically like, that's what we do you can try thinking about it but yeah i mean someone didn't get in the line if uh, his value is greater than all of the values after it uh but, but like not the actual values but the values when they are converted to with the minus i it's kind of hard to actually wrap your head head around it but it's a pretty cool trick and yeah that that's like how you should start the solution and now it, as you can notice we basically need to perform this thing for pretty much every query because like yeah this isn't very hard so yeah i mean right now you can easily see that we can do easy linear queries and yeah how would you do it it's just like the answer right now initially is just the length of the segment, the maximum is just minus n, and you just go from right to left, and you change the maximum and decrease the answer by 1. And something we can note is that we don't really need to make the transformation for every query separately, we can just do the transformation once in the beginning, because like, in our algorithm we just care about the relative order of the elements, and not the exact values, because like, the only place where we actually check values is whether something is greater than ma greater than max and i mean the relative order if we did the transformation for some specific query and the relative order if we just did all the, the transformations in the beginning will be basically the same so we can just do the transformation one time in the beginning and then just use the ai array and now like we are now we basically have like a linear query and the linear update the update is basically just add w to all values in the range so yeah that, that's like relatively easy uh the hard part is to basically wrap wrap your head around why this works and yeah okay so basically let's go to the full solution and the full solution so this technically isn't the full solution but like th there are two ways to solve the problem if you want to get better than quadratic complexity the first one is basically with squared decomposition in some sense like uh, we do the most basic version of square decomposition where we have some blocks like we have the whole array and we split it into box blocks and in every block we are basically going to just run our algorithm which is like this thing and we are going to keep this chain of maxims in some sense like, like yeah we are going to keep this chain of maxims and yeah i mean this can easily be done in linear time to just like build the whole thing and now the main thing is that we can actually easily update so so the, the thing is that right now we have like two types of queries the first one is the update where we have like left right and w and we want to add w to all elements from left to right and what you can notice is that uh when we actually update some block we don't we won't really i mean if we want to update a full block then this chain won't change and we are just going to have like some delta added to all elements so what we can do is just keep some delta or like change array for every block and yeah that's relatively easy to do and for like the because like when we update from left to right it's not necessarily true that we are just going to go through like complete blocks maybe we are going to have like some two blocks for for which like we update some parts and for those like we just rebuild the whole blocks and yeah that, that's relatively easy again so the complexity of the update is will be actually n over b plus b because we also have those blocks the previous site had the typo uh, and now the queries can be done actually in n divided i mean n over b multiplied by log n 
plus b because like for for the size we still need some b and yeah i mean it's pretty much like you implement this same idea but instead of going through all positions from right, right to left you know like when you're at some position which is like the end point of some block and the left is like outside of this block then you can we won't really just use this uh, I mean, we won't just go manually for, for every position in this block, but we are just going to like use the chain we have pre-computed or like this chain to basically just do the jump in a fast way. And this way, like we are going to skip uh, square root positions here from right to left, because uh, in some sense, like what you're going to do is using binary search, like, like we kind of know the current maximum of the chain we are building like for some specific query. And what we are going to do is we are just going to binary search in uh, in the in the block that we want to skip. And this will basically give us uh, the position after which uh, we... Yeah, I mean, basically like using this binary search, we can easily just skip the whole block in just logarithmic time. So yeah, I mean, queries, queries will be done in n over b multiplied by log time because like at most there'll be at most n over b full blocks if b is basically the size of the block and yeah we also have like this plus b because it's not necessarily that some query from left to right will just cover the whole i mean yeah some, some query is not necessarily just containing full blocks maybe there are some sites and for the sites we can just run the manual algorithm which we already mentioned it's relatively simple so yeah, um, if we actually choose a good value for b, we can get like uh, square root of uh, n multiplied by log. So in some sense, like this solution would be kind of depends on the size of the b. And if you choose like b at around 1,500, then we are going to get like a pretty good complexity. Uh, but this is, was the intended solution for 60 points. And... Uh, the constraints are chosen in such a way that it's it's not uh, probably you won't be able to pass uh, 400 points with such a solution because it's yeah it's it's not intended for the full solution to actually um, be this squared solution and there is like actually a logarithmic solution actually log squared but yeah it's it's better than square root and yeah the solution actually uses segmentry and it actually it's it's pretty neat in some sense and what we are going to do is it's it's actually quite similar to the to what we have in the square root solution so normally when we have a solution let, let's just have a segment tree and in every node we are going to keep a representation of every chain and by chain i mean imagine that we have like some segment tree this is just a part of the segment tree and this is some node that have like two children and the children are basically some chains and by chain i mean like we just run the algorithm from the right bound of some block to the left basically yeah to the left block and as you can see like if we had something like that uh, those were like the chains of the children then the chain for like the parent would be pretty much the same you just run this algorithm and yeah okay actually i have a typo here <laughs> again sorry about that it, there should be like also a minus four between those two because like yeah it's, it's going to be like the full right chain with some new elements added in in our case like we are going to also add like minus three and zero so it, like this this chain above actually has five elements okay, let me just okay yeah uh whatever i mean uh, i'm gonna fix it after that if someone is, is interested in the presentation um but, but yeah like in general uh, yeah, but basically like we have the segment tree and the chain above is actually just the combination of the two chains below. And what we can do is... Yeah, but basically like we just need to maintain such a representations for for the chains. And the hard part is to actually think how, how to represent those chains because you can't really just uh, have them as normal chains because then the solution will be quadratic because like, yeah, those chains can be relatively long and you need to combine them somehow. And yeah, like basically we need to figure out two things, how to, what do we want to keep in the segment tree nodes or like how to, what the representation of those chains would be with this, like the first thing. And the second one is how do we actually combine two chains? Because like 
it's it's actually not that easy to combine them because in some sense like you need to do a binary search or something to actually figure out where the link is so yeah in some sense it's like yeah it's not that easy to basically combine the chains uh if you just wanted to do everything in the beginning like, like if we didn't have updates and anything uh then we could have something like a divide and conquer or like a merge sort segment tree and this com com combined wouldn't we have been so hard but like in general it's relatively hard to do it and we also need to figure out what do we want to keep in the nodes because like we have like those vectors or those chains which can have like quite a lot of elements and yeah we want to have some representation which has less memory or so in some sense and yeah so the idea is actually relatively simple again which is which may be kind of surprising and what we are going to do is for every node we are going to keep the maximum value in the chain so in some sense like here we are going to keep minus four here we are going to keep zero and in the above node it will be again zero and the other thing is it will be the number of elements in the chain so yeah basically here it will be three here again it will be three here it, it will be five although here you can see four elements but as i said there is a typo and we should also have had like the minus four here so the hard thing is to actually find the count so i mean it's easy to basically find the maximum when we merge two nodes because obviously it will be just the maximum of this like it will be the maximum of the two maximums well for the count it's actually kind of hard because you want to we are going to use basically just the right count but we are going to increase it by the number of elements we skip uh we don't skip here so in this case we know that after minus four we are going to go to three so we need to increase the answer by two so yeah like basically like finding the count is actually relatively hard and the main idea is to actually do every merge in logarithmic time in some sense like you do have the normal segment tree but every time you merge something you're going to have like some function that's m does this merge in logarithmic time and this kind of counterintuitive counterintuitive because most of the times when you have like some segment tree solution you would just have some merges which are constant and yeah you would try to keep some more data in the state but like you could there's like also this approach where you could increase the complexity for every merge and then to basically gather the data and yeah what you can basically do is to somehow I mean, the, the thing is that like we can, we already know that we want to find the the length of the chain after minus four in our case, which will be in the left child. And this can be actually done by just walking through the tree uh, in logarithmic time. Why? Well, be, because like you already know that like, like for every node, you know uh, the two children and you know the maximum in both of them. And like, in a way, th this information is enough to just walk through the tree in logarithmic time and yeah like you basically want to find the first value in the chain which is greater than minus four in our case and yeah like, like this means that you're either going to go to the left child or the right child if you go to the left child you're basically just gonna uh, just go there and get the answer using this procedure from the left child otherwise if you go to the right child you're gonna increase the answer by by the size of uh you, you're gonna go to the right child you're gonna get like some answer and then you're gonna increase this answer by also the value from the right child but yeah i mean you, you kind of have to figure out the details but the main idea is that you have to figure out that you can also do a search in the segment tree to basically merge your values or in some sense like uh to, to do this like combination of two nodes you just like go through the tree in logarithmic time and uh, figure out where you're actually going to land after going from minus four and yeah i mean this is something like binary search and yeah this way you like you do the merge in logarithmic time and again like, like if we can basically do this thing then we can also just have lazy propagation for the updates because the updates are also kind of easy uh mostly because like if we do lazy propagation the relative order in every node won't really change so what we can do is basically just yeah we add some value 
Again, we should keep in mind that in the merge, we are again going to use like this logarithmic function, which basically kind of finds the link. And that's pretty much the whole solution. Uh, I, I suggest you check the solution, like the implementation. It's relatively easy. Uh, the main two parts which are hardest this problem are basically to figure out that you can do the, you can, in a way, like if you figure out that you can do some logarithmic merge, which is not that common, then the idea for the whole merge isn't that hard. And yeah, like, like you just have to think about how can you merge it and to figure out that having like additional complexity for every merge isn't a huge problem. So after you figure this out, all of the details basically just come into place. And then the other part, for, part of the solution is basically to figure out that you can do the transformation. If you have like the simulation, you can figure out that you can do this AI minus I transformation. And yeah, after this point, everything is pretty much just some details. And also like those details aren't very hard. So yeah, the problem is in my opinion was pretty cool. Uh, this idea isn't that common. And I guess like some people may learn that idea of like doing this merge from this problem. So yeah, that's in my opinion, pretty cool. So yeah, I guess that's it. And yeah. Uh, Overall, the complexity, I guess you could figure it out, but like we have Q queries, you have a segment tree. So we have a logarithm from the segment tree and like every merge is also logarithmic. So merge or like combine of the two, seg two segment trees, uh, two segment tree nodes is also like logarithmic. So we have log squared complexity and this was fast enough. Also like you can notice that the constant of the solution is relatively small because the binary search is very simple. By binary search, I mean like the search in the tree is very simple. You like it, it doesn't really have a, a large constant because you just go left or right, and yeah, that's that's relatively easy. So yeah, that's pretty much the solution. I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I guess like uh, you can learn some new things from this problem, especially the thing with the logarithmic merge. When I saw that, I found this one pretty cool. So yeah, thanks for watching. And yeah, I hope I'll see you next time.